Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be going over a complete beginner's guide to using the project management platform ClickUp. Now in the past, Charlie and I have used Notion to plan, store, and organize all of the content that went out on YouTube. But we recently switched over to ClickUp just over a year ago. And since then we've used it for all of our channels and online businesses. And yeah, we highly recommend it for all entrepreneurs that wanna start planning, organizing, and collaborating on projects. You'll wanna watch the entire video because we'll be going over the basics of how to create spaces, change views, custom statuses, columns, along with all the other tips and tricks that we've learned in the past year. And if you guys don't have a ClickUp account already set up, we'll leave a link down in the description below if you guys wanna follow along with this tutorial. Okay, so when you guys click on the link in the description, you guys are gonna be taken to this website right here. And from here, all you have to do is just enter in your email and then click on get started. And then once you get set up with your account, you should be sent to a page that looks something like this. And so this is basically your entire workspace. And right off the bat, you guys see that I've created two different spaces and I've created some folders and task lists inside. But to basically give you guys an overview of how the entire system works, first of all, you have your entire workspace. So I've just went ahead and named this Joey's workspace. This is where you'd put the name of the company or you can put something like your personal name as well. And then next up we have spaces. So you have your workspace, which is pretty much everything. And then you have spaces, which is the next separation within the hierarchy. So within my workspace, I have a space for social media, and then I have another space for just projects. And I believe on the free plan of ClickUp, you're able to create up to five spaces. So that's more than enough for the beginner. And if you wanna upgrade to more spaces, then you can do so in the future. And right here on the pricing page, you guys can see that it's actually not that expensive at all. If you guys just wanna go for the unlimited plan, so this is gonna give you, you know, as many spaces as you want, along with, you know, unlimited storage, unlimited integration, dashboards, and a bunch of other features, it's only gonna cost you $5 per month. And then of course you have the business plan and the business plus plan, but for now, it's totally okay for you guys to start off on the free plan. Okay, so going back into my ClickUp workspace, you guys can see that if you want to add a new space, you just click on the add space button right here. And from there, it's gonna ask you to put in a space name. So for example, let's say I wanna create a space for my database. So I'm gonna go ahead and name it that. And you can go ahead and click on some templates and you can see that there's a bunch of different templates that ClickUp offers you. So you have some for project management, marketing, SEO. You can see that it goes all the way down to blockchain ecosystems, event planning, and so much more. And here on the left-hand side, you guys can see that there's different types of templates as well as the levels. So if you're a total beginner, you can go ahead and just click on this. It's gonna show you all the beginner templates to use. So if I were you guys, I would go ahead and look through all these different templates and see which one fits your business the best. But you guys can always just create a custom one when you're just starting out so I'll just go ahead and click on back right here and I'll go ahead and click next. From here, you're gonna be able to choose a space color. So let's say I wanna make this one red and you can go ahead and upload your own avatar as well as just choose an emoji right here. So let's say I just wanna make it this one right here and I'll just go ahead and click next. And then from here, it's gonna ask me if I want to share the database for everybody that's in my workspace or if I just wanna make it private. So for this, if you guys have team members on your workspace, then if you share it with the entire workspace, basically any member that has access is gonna be able to see this space. So I always recommend that you start off private and once you add any members, then you can share accordingly to who you want to share each space with. From here, I'm gonna click on next and it's gonna ask me what task statuses that I want. For this, you guys don't need to worry about too much. It's just gonna give you a bunch of templates to choose from and you guys can see that it's gonna have different ones for different types of lists. So you have content, right? Kanban, marketing. You guys can see that it goes from open to concept in progress. And basically these just give your task a status that you can set it to so that you and your team can keep track of the progress on all the different tasks. For now, I'll just go to custom and then I'll click on next. And right here, it's gonna ask you if you want to turn off all click apps or it's gonna ask you to choose specific ones. Again, this stuff is all pretty complicated for beginners, so no need to worry about it right now. Just click on next. And right here, it's gonna ask you if you want to add any views. Again, for beginners, you don't need to worry about any of this stuff. You can add it on later. So right here, you just click on review space and it's gonna review everything. So right here, I named it database. I chose that avatar 
avatar. I made it private and I just went ahead and made the default for all these different things that it's asking me. So right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on create space. And right here, you guys can see that it just popped up. So because on the free plan, you only have five spaces, you wanna make sure that you're separating it into big categories, like, you know, databases where you can keep all of your SOPs and team members on. And you can also have another one for, you know, social media where you can have all your different social media channels as well as platforms. And you can also have different spaces for different projects that you have. Now, the next thing on the hierarchy is folders. So inside of each space, you have the option to create a folder list or doc. And if you go ahead and click on the plus button right here, you guys are going to see that there's a bunch of other options as well. Like you can just create a list, you can create a doc, a whiteboard, you can choose from a template, or you can even import anything from Asana, Monday.com, Trello, Basecamp, and all of those other project management softwares. So if I go back to my social media, you guys are going to see that I actually created a folder for YouTube. So let's say I want to create another folder for another YouTube channel, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and click on the plus sign and then I'm going to go up to folder and from here it's going to ask me to enter a name. So I'm going to just put Joey's YouTube channel and from here, it's gonna allow me to change the name of my list. It's gonna allow me to change who I share it with along with the task statuses. I can go up right here and choose from templates, but again, super, super simple. I just wanna start off with the basics. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on create folder. From here, it's gonna create that folder. And inside of that folder, I can create lists, docs, whiteboards, and all that good stuff as well. So this is just a super great way to organize all of your different projects within your spaces. So I can create another folder for TikTok. I can create another folder for Instagram. Basically anything that falls under social media, I can create a folder for. And inside of those folders, I can create docs like SOPs. I can create task lists for specific members of the team. And yeah, it just adds another level of organization within your platform. Now you don't have to create a folder to add a list or a doc. You could just create one right on the space itself. So if you guys want, you guys will just have to go back to the space that it's on, click on the plus sign. And from here, let's say I just want to create a list. I can just give it a name. So just just list test. And if I create that, then you guys are going to see that it creates it outside of the folders. So no need to create folders if you guys don't want to. But if you guys have a ton of different projects within that space, you guys can create those folders just to condense them a little bit and organize them. And you guys can see right here that if I go ahead and click on add a doc, it's going to add that doc and it's going to allow me to title it whatever I want. So let's say I want to name this one YouTube SOPs. And from here, I just have to go ahead and type in whatever I want. So this is basically the same thing as with Notion, you know, how you create a page and you can immediately just start writing in it. You guys can see that I can also add another page to it and this is going to create a sub page. And yeah, you can create as many pages as you want and it's all going to be stored on this doc right here. Now, the one thing that I want to say about this is you don't want to overcomplicate things when you're just getting started because with so many spaces, folders and lists, things can become pretty disorganized. So you want to try to combine spaces and folders and just make things a little less overwhelming whenever you go on the platform right? Because if you go into your ClickUp and you see a bunch of different spaces, folders, docs, lists, you could get easily overwhelmed, which takes you away from using the platform in the first place. So we want to make things as simple as possible so that we can maximize the chance that you are actually going to use the platform. So if you're a beginner, just stick with the basics for now. Now, the next thing that I want to go over is for each list that you have, you also have the option to create different views. So as you guys can see right here, this is a list view. So right here, I have the ideas task, right? So let's say YouTube video, video idea one and I can create video idea two. And if I go ahead and click on the square right here, this basically opens up all the different task statuses. So as you guys can see, it already created the template for me with the ideas, scripting in progress, filming, post-production, published and published. And that's because I set it up for the social media space to always have that specific template for the task statuses. And the way that I did that was I went to my space and I clicked on the three dots right here. From here, you click on the more settings button and right here where it says task statuses, you can click on that and you guys can see See that I just chose the content template. And right here, you guys can see that it says ideas, scripting, progress, and all that different stuff. And you click on save, and it's basically going to apply it for every single list that you create under that space. So right here, if I go ahead and change this to the filming, you guys are going to see that it creates a separate section right here. And if I want it to go in descending order, right? So if I want the ideas to go on the top and filming on the bottom, then I would just have to go to group right here. And right here where it has the arrows or going up and down, I just click on that. And it's going to change 
the layout of the list. And right here at the bottom right hand corner, it's going to ask me if I want to auto save or just save. I highly recommend just turning on auto save. This is just going to make sure that anytime that you make a change to the list, it's going to save it automatically without having to ask you every single time. So I'm just going to click on auto save right here. And you guys can see now that if I create another one, right? So video idea three, and I go ahead and change it to the published section, it's going to create a different status section right here called publish. It's going to have all the videos that are assigned to that status. So if I want, I can go ahead and just click on this arrow right here. And it's basically going to hide all of my published ones. Over time, you're going to have a ton of videos that you have in the published one, and you might not want to see all of it. Same thing for all the other task statuses, right? If you don't want to see all of your ideas, then you just click on this arrow right here. Now from here, the next thing that I want to talk about is views. So as you guys can see at the top right here, you guys have the list view, but you also have different views like the board view, calendar view, mind map. And if you click on plus view right here, you guys can see that there's a bunch of different views that you could choose from like Gantt, you could choose timeline, team, table, workload, activity, and a bunch of other views that you can use specifically for what you want to see. So if I go ahead and click on board view right here, it's going to basically create the same thing as notion with their board view where it goes side to side like that. And if I want to change the status, then all I have to do is just click and drag instead of with the list view, I would have to go into each square and then choose it myself. Now I will say that with something like content creation, I think list view is a lot better because once you have a ton of different ideas, a ton of videos in the filming and the scripting and progress, you want to see all of it along with all the custom columns right here. And with the board view, you wouldn't be able to see all that stuff. You would have to click on each of it in order to see the columns. But more on that later, if we go and click on the calendar view, then you can see obviously we have the calendar view, right? So if we go back and we assign a due date right here, if I click on tomorrow as the due date, and I go back to the calendar view, and I can see that the video idea popped up for tomorrow. And if I go ahead and click on mind map, you guys can see that you know, there's different ways that you can structure it, right? You can create a visual representation where it goes from one folder to many different tasks, or you could just create an exploration mind map where you can just create a bunch of different things, right? And so this visual representation is basically going to take all of your existing tasks. But for this one, you can create tasks from any node. And so you're basically starting from blank. I highly recommend that you guys just look through all these different views and see which one is the best for you. Most of the time, we just use the list board and the calendar view, but you guys can see that they have other stuff, right? Like for example, they have the table view, right? So this is going to allow you to easily manage, update and organize your tasks using a table view. So if I want to add that to my view, I just click on this right here, you can see that turns all the tasks into a table view. So it's basically the same thing as the table view in notion. And with all these different spaces, folders, lists and docs, you can customize it and you can change the names. So if you go up to the top left hand corner, it's going to allow you to click on the three dots, which allows you to rename it. So I can go ahead and name this content calendar. And if I go ahead and click on the list icon right here, I could actually change the color. So let's say I just want to color this one red as well. It's going to basically create the entire thing as red. That way, if I want to look at every single list that's inside of this folder, I could just go ahead and click on it. And yeah, it just makes it easier for your eyes to separate each list according to the color that you gave it. Okay, the next thing that I want to go over is the custom statuses. And from here, you might be thinking like, hey, I want to create my own statuses, right? I don't want to name it ideas, post production and published. I want to name it completely different and I want to have different statuses to choose from, right? So if you want to do that, then all you have to do is go to your list and click on the three dots. And from here, you guys are going to click on list settings and list statuses. You guys can see that it's using the space statuses. So if I want to go custom, then I'll just click on that. And right here, I can add in my own statuses for the active done as well as closed statuses. So right here, if I click on add status, I can create a new one. So let's say, for example, I want to create one for needs review, I can press enter. And from here, I can assign a color to it. So let's say I want to make it yellow. And from here, I can change it to a done status. And if I want, then I can just rename it by clicking on the three dots. And I can rename it change color. And I can also delete it from here, all I would have to do is click on save. And right here, it's going to ask me if I want to change all the different ones that I had before, but I'm not going to do that for now. But you guys get the point, you could start off with the custom status yourself, or you can use the space statuses with the pre built templates that they give you. And the next thing that I want to talk about is 
is these custom columns right here. So as you guys can see, there's an assignee due date and priority custom status already made for you. And so if I go ahead and click on the assign, you guys can see that I can assign it to myself right now because I'm the only one in this workspace. But if you have team members on your ClickUp, then you can also assign it to them and they'll receive a notification. Going to the due date, this is pretty self-explanatory. Going to the priority, you have urgent, high, normal, and low. And you can also change this stuff. All you have to do is click on the plus sign right here to add column. And right here where it says show and hide, you guys can see that it's showing the assignee due date and priority right now. But there's a bunch of other fields that you guys can choose from. For example, assigned comments, created by, date done. You can track the task ID. And if you go over to new column right here, there's a bunch of different options that you guys can choose from like drop down, text, date. This one's a really cool one called progress. It'll basically track the completion of any tasks and subtasks, right? And there's just a bunch of other different columns that you guys can add. So for example, with a YouTube content calendar, you could create a drop down menu. And right here, it's going to ask you for the field name. So I can create a sponsors drop down. And from here, I can add different options. So let's say this video is being sponsored by me. So I could just put Joey and then I can add a color to it. So let's say green. And right here, I can add another option. And for another option, I could say that it's Charlie. And then I can add a color of yellow. And then I can go ahead and add the column. And then it's going to show up right here on the right hand side. And from here, I can go ahead and drag this and reassign it to whichever position that I want. And if I click on the sponsors, then I can add in myself or Charlie for the sponsors. And I can also just type in anything and create a new one. So let's say I just want to create a new one for Jacob, and then it'll give me the option to add it right here. Obviously, you wouldn't put names of people, you'd put names of the companies that you're working with. But yeah, this is just one example of what you guys can do. Another example is within my projects, I just put an example clothing brand. And for a business like this, maybe you'd want to see your budget, your budget spent as well as your total. So I just went ahead and created a budget, which is money right here. You guys can see that they have the money option. And then I also created another column for budget spent. And for this one, I just created a formula. So right here where it says formula, I can go ahead and give it a name and then change the formula. So right here, I have the budget minus the budget spent. And you guys can see that I can also add, multiply and divide. And I can choose from the budget spent minus the budget or vice versa. So yeah, as you guys can see, this is super customizable. This platform can create so much automation and efficiency within your business. I highly recommend just messing around with all the different columns and task statuses that you want to create. But again, try to keep it simple to just one or two spaces in the beginning with a couple of lists, maybe a few folders and just start from there. And later on, as your business grows, you can go ahead and expand out. You can create more folders, lists, and yeah, all that stuff. Now, the last thing that I want to go over is the dashboards. So if you go on to the left hand side right here, and you can see it says dashboards right there, or you could just press D and it'll take you to your dashboard. So you guys can see right here that it has a dashboard already pre built for you, just showing you all the stuff that you can do with the dashboard, right? And as you guys know, things can be pretty hectic and disorganized once you're creating a bunch of different spaces, folders and all that good stuff. So if you guys want to have a specific view where you guys can see the majority of the important things, you guys can use dashboards and use widgets in order to see the most important things that are going on in your business. If I go ahead and click on add a widget right here, you guys can see that it has a bunch of different things that you guys can choose from like pie charts, you guys can create chats. And if I go to custom right here, you guys can also make bar charts, battery charts. But I would say that you don't need to do any of this stuff at first, because all this stuff is only included in the business plan, which I think is about $12 per month. But as you build out your team, and you have a bunch of different things going on in your ClickUp every day, it's pretty important for you as the business owner or CEO to just go on to ClickUp, go to your dashboard, and you can immediately see all the different charts from all the different businesses that you have. So you can see the bigger picture of what things need to be worked on. I would say that the best thing about dashboards is that you can create text blocks. So for example, I can create one called notes. And if I go ahead and click add widget right there, I can go ahead and just jot down any notes that I want to keep. And anytime that I want to see it, I just have to go to my dashboard and I can keep track of things like monthly, quarterly and annual goals. And you can also share these dashboards with other team members if you want. So if you have an assistant, then you can go ahead and just click share right here. And right here, it'll give you the option to invite by name if they're already in the workspace, or you could just go ahead and send them an email invite. Now, one last trick that I want to show you guys is using the favorites option. So right here, if I go to my social media, and I go to my YouTube and go to my content calendar, you guys can see that I had to click on the space, the folder and the task list in order to go to where I wanted to go. But if I go ahead and go to the task, and I click on the three dots, you guys are going to see that it has the option to add to favorites. And once I click on that, it's going to add it to my favorites, which is right here. And what I recommend is actually pinning it to the top. So if I click on this pin button right here, 
it's gonna go ahead and add all of my favorite tabs to this top section right here of your ClickUp. So for example, if I wanna add this one to it as well, I can go ahead and add to the favorites and you guys can see that it's gonna pop up right there. So this is super useful and saves you a ton of time if you have a bunch of different lists within your ClickUp that you're always going to. And if you add it to your favorites, you can access it from pretty much anywhere on your workspace. So that's pretty much the basics for how to use ClickUp for beginners. I hope you guys found this video helpful. And if you guys wanna go back to any section that I talked about, we're gonna be leaving timestamps on the video. If you guys wanna go through each section again, and again, if you guys wanna use ClickUp, we're gonna be leaving a link down in the description below for you guys to check it out. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this. This channel is dedicated to helping out new entrepreneurs start their own business. And that's all for now. See you in the next video.